Student clients, welcome back to another edition of the NMS eLearning Systems YouTube channel, brought to you by the DLA Guru. Welcome, welcome, Randy. Hey, welcome you, man. All right, fantastic. Yeah, big, so big fan, you know. <laughs> I really appreciate it. You know, it's just it's a new thing for me, and um, and I'm I'm excited about reaching out. I mean, I meet so many people, and I was like, wow, I should have been doing this years ago. Um, yeah, but everything happens in due time, and so so here I am, and uh, I'm glad that I'm able to be a beacon of like. Uh, I guess light in a in a very murky area of government contracting with the DLA because they don't do a whole lot of marketing and training and whatnot. So I'm like, hey man, that's 20 years were well worth the effort. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Yeah. So you complete the master class. Let me know. I always like to hear from folks. So like just give it to me raw. How was the class? It was all right, man. I, you know, like I'm a, I'm a military guy, so I go over over things, things over and over. I, three o'clock in the morning, I'm still looking at stuff that you did before, and it's like, yeah, I can understand now because at first it don't sink in, and then after a while, it just registers, you know. Okay. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty impressed, and then uh, my wife, you know, she wants to learn it too, so I said I'll teach you some things. I said, but I got to talk to the master guru first <laughs> <laughs> fantastic all right man well hey that's great and it's great that you got a military background too so a lot of probably what you're, you're like getting involved with the dla it's like second nature you're like oh man that's what that was all about you know it all kind of kind of together exactly. yeah exactly. i see on your shirt uh are you were you are you navy yeah yep okay all right well hey thanks again for your service uh to the nation and keeping us <laughs> safe and sound and good enough so how long were you in the, in the u.s military i retired man <laughs> oh okay okay oh, yeah yeah right. back in 2001 i i retired after 9 11 happened and i tried to get back in but i had put my retirement paper we work in a year before so they wouldn't let me come back in and go do my thing again you know so they said you got 20 years and be happy <laughs> okay fantastic so would you would you happen to be service disabled at all yeah oh yeah so i'm certified I, I got the sba certification and everything oh yeah so the doa is your your best friend uh, uh president biden has pretty much made it one of his missions for his particular administration to make sure that he's supporting at, at every level uh vets you know so if you have the service disabled vet distinction uh, mm -hmm. I can definitely assist you on how you can position your company to be successful. Oh yeah, I even put it on my. I have a website, so I put it on my website, and I put it on my capability statement on the web page, and got my. You know, I got the, the thing yesterday. I said, go ahead and attach this to your website now. So now it says, uh, SBA, SDLB uh, certified on there. So. Okay, cool, cool. And uh, even with the DLA, they have a ton of national stock numbers that are set aside just for. Cer certified service they will vet uh, vet uh, companies and and i'm hoping that you know you know everything is all about timing and i'm i'm hoping that you know some of the tools and some of the training that i can provide can kind of give you a little bit of a uh, i guess a, a a competitive advantage uh yes. and how to find yes. those opportunities now keep in mind there are there's competition so don't think that there's, oh yeah i know a lot of companies bidding on that type of work but at least it's not as big, you know, it, it kind right. of squeezes it down uh, to where yeah. it's palatable. Yeah. Yeah. I submitted my first bid uh, a couple of days ago. So I guess it expired yesterday. So I don't know if it's a nail on that. It was something small, but you know, like, so I won't get my foot in the door. Then okay. I wrote a couple of questions down. I wanted to ask you about certain things too. So sure. Uh, oh yeah. We got a full, you know, I always like to kind of get a feel for, you know, for the student yeah. client and vice versa. And then we just right. dive right in. Yeah. But so then, go ahead. What are your questions? Well, I tell you, my background is like, you know, in the Navy, I was in telecommunications, then we moved to ITs. And then uh, I got out and went, to, well, I went to college before I joined, so I was in advertising and stuff. So I had that good background, so I'm pretty good at marketing stuff. And then I, I don't know, I saw what you did and it, it started, a light bulb went off in my head and said, listen to this guy, he's making sense. Because the other people I look at, you know, they got these outrageous prices, but it's like, it's like you're in school for like seven to eight days and you got to listen to them and, they just don't come across to me as being effective enough. So when I saw yours and a couple of other guys say the same thing that they can relate to you, I guess because I'm a kind of old school kind of guy, you know. 
Yeah. And my, my background's engineering, you know, so I think it's just the way my mind works. I just right. cut straight to it, get rid of the fluff and all. I don't need to promise dreams of grandeur. It just exactly. gets it. how do we do the work? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. I got, I got a couple of questions here on my little thing here. Uh, one was like, uh, you know how you were talking about the VSM stuff? Cause, uh, I, 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 I do like a, I was doing a lot of medical stuff. So I got like, like 11 companies that I made, had relationships with. I even did a Granger thing and Uline and uh, Global Industrial. And I talked to a couple of those guys and a couple of them are like uh, this doctor. I mean, Henry, I don't know if you're familiar with Henry Sean, he does medical stuff. Okay. Uh, and so like they had something for like an x-ray jacket and it was like 20 something dollars. And uh and I was talking to the, the representative. He said, "You know what? It shows that, but we can do what we call a." Uh, he said, "He said, uh, yeah, contact price. Are you familiar with that contact pricing?" A contact pricing? Yeah, it's like if it reads like when you go to the website and they say four seven eight. What since I got the bits thing with them and they know about what I do, they say a contact price on Jack that it make it from like four seven eight to like four thirteen. So okay. they said certain things you can get contact pricing so oh okay it. yeah that that terminology doesn't ring bell it sounds like you, he's able to get a better price than what's published on the website basically right right yeah so yeah they'll give you a little di deeper discount yeah right and then with the vsm thing uh you know i was trying to submit a bid and i went to the site where you was recommended and i went there and i i couldn't get in and i called guys up he said no you have to wait to be awarded uh a bid before you can we can do this do this magic with you so I yes didn't know yes that all right so yeah, so VSM is the vendor shipment module. And yes, uh, you can gain access once you get an official award. And okay. what the VSM is basically, it helps you to, it generates the shipping documents that you'll need okay. Okay. to accompany your shipment. Right. And then I saw a couple of things. Uh, if you access my computer, you'll see a, uh, a bit I had online. But All I was right. curious about when I see like the, the R RP001, I don't know what that means, and the RA001. And I figured you can enlighten me. With okay, that no option. problem. I have enabled uh, the share screen function. So you can go ahead. And I would say instead of sharing the window, like share the entire screen, because sometimes oh. people just share the browser window. Oh. Yeah. And be, by the way, SEI Global, it's not the only platform that's out there, but I, I do recommend something like an SEI Global. Right, right. To assist you, with, especially if you're looking at service disabled vet set asides. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. It's a kind of a reach because the dibs is not. You'll see. The more you do this, you'll you'll see you'll see that dibs is not really designed to make your life easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I got a company. Uh, it's called I think it's something Gov, and I go there, and uh, let me see if I can pull it down and show you very quick. Gov, Gov, Gov Direct. I used to go to these guys too. Okay. I go there, and then I'll log myself in. I'll log back in. And then I'll just scroll down. Like, you know, they have things here too that let me do this thing. You know, it says small business set aside and service disabled veterans. So you can go there. Okay. Uh, usually I'll scroll here and like I want to do a medical thing and I'll go to like uh, supplies and I'll see like a medical thing here and I do a search and it'll give me like a couple of states I wanted since I'm in Vegas I do like uh Utah and California and another one and see I get the states on what was available okay and I scroll and I go to the very bottom I'll see uh DLA all down here so and that's just for medical stuff and so I'll, I'll just click one at random uh, like a test kit okay and see this pops up it'll give me that this number here this thing here and I go straight to See, that's been canceled, so we'll get out of that one. But uh, this is helpful too. This is like my backup because <laughs> I was enjoying that, like shower shoes. I'll go here and uh, I'll just click that again. Okay. Here's see. Here. Yeah. So go ahead and work your magic from there then. Okay, cool. So you basically are asking a question more or less like uh, you want to be able to look at solicitation and kind of unpack a solicitation. Right, right. 
Okay. All right. So uh, this is the act. What I recommend, of course, open up the solicitation document, and that's going to open it up as a PDF. And it's at the bottom. You see that? Yeah. Go ahead. You can. We can uh, double uh, control the computer. So go ahead and bring it up for me. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So the first thing that I always look at, and especially you know being you know, new to the DLA, um, the solicitations, there there are some that are worth going after where it's like the path of least resistance. And then there are some that are a little bit more complicated to, to manage. Right. Right. And, and I would, I would always say when you're looking at these, the first, very first page, I always like to look at this block seven. Block seven says FOB destination or other. So in this right. one, the box FOB destination, which means you would be responsible for shipping, covering the shipping costs to get it from the, the point of origin that is either your house or your office right. and or shipping straight from your vendor. If you have a relationship with your vendor to get it shipped to the DLA and the DLA is not covering the shipping. All right. right. So when you, when you look at those, you want to make a mental note, like, okay, I got to cover shipping. So you're going to have to know some things about the material. Right. Um, you know, the weight, the dimensions, you know, like yeah. shipping from California to, let's say uh, you, you're in Vegas. So it, if it comes to you in Vegas for you to do the packaging and let's say the D, the DLA depot is in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania. So you got to be able to price in shipping it from Vegas to New Cumberland, Pennsylvania across the country, what that would yeah. cost, you know? So yeah. just FYI on that, I'm not, I don't say avoid these, but just know that that's an extra layer of cost right. that you have to factor in. Now, a question on that one, since I'm a Navy guy, I, a couple of days going to like a couple of ships I was on, like one was going to like the USNS conference. How would that work out? Because, you know, do you find out they're at sea or, or did it go no. to like the home port in California? Where they, I mean, Washington State, where they're at? Exactly. It typically goes to uh, a distribution center. Then, uh -huh. then they take care of it from there. And so a lot of these solicitations will have this thing called a Mark IV technical control number, a TCN okay. number. That will then give, let's say, the DLA's uh, uh, disposition system, uh, center right. instructions of which naval carrier. So the DLA would be responsible to get to okay. get the actual on the ship. Okay. Now you may find some where you would be responsible for shipping it to a base in Egypt, for example, or in Israel. Or, <laughs> you know, so like some of them are international shipping points as well. So a lot of those would be FLB destination too. So you got to be careful, you know. Uh, so. Block seven to always just look at there first and say, okay, cool. I got to cover shipping. So let me make sure I understand where this thing is going. And especially if you get into bigger items like motors and pumps, I mean, it can get kind of crazy, you know, as far as the yeah. shipping costs. If I'm going to ease it. I'm going to ease into that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Out of my uh, wheelhouse right now. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So cool. So, you know, getting started, I always recommend like the other box to be checked. That way, right. you know, the DLA will provide you with, you know, uh, uh, right. well, especially with shipping the materials to the to the designated depot. All right. Yeah, so I that's come, the I come across a couple of them that said other before, so I was happy, but majority of the medicals, they, like the socks and stuff, you know, uh, they, they might want like, you know, 40 of them or whatever it is, but I'll be mean, with we'll you when we scroll through. And yep. then uh, I, what I did was like, I was listening to you talk to some guy and I said, you know, you hit UPS. And I went to uh, the medical thing and the guy gave me the dimensions and stuff. And then I put that in the UPS site and they factored in the weight and how much it would cost because they can do like a one, two or three days. And I would always do a three days thing. But sometimes I'm confused because I, I figured you say something about an inspector got to come inspect your stuff before you ship it though, right? If, if the contract, and we're going to get into that too as we break this okay. down. Uh, but that's another kind of distinction of the solicitations. It's called FOB, uh, well, inspection point origin or, or right. inspection point destination. I got you. Origin means DCMA is going to get involved if they, okay. if they have to inspect it at the shipping point. Now, right. when it's destination, you don't really care. DCMA can, you know, right. DLA covers the inspection <laughs> uh, at their depot. All right. So the, the next thing I like to look at is block five and knowing which command, you know, you're going to be working with. And some are more, or I should say, easier to work with. And right. so DLA troop support, DLA land and maritime are probably the top two commands that I think for, for folks getting started to work with. Okay. Um, for years, we've been trying to get involved with DLA energy. 
And this this year, we finally got a toe in <laughs> to work with GLA Energy. And so each command is it, it's its own kind of organization. Okay. So what flies with one may not fly with another. They have right. their own commands, their own kernels that kind of manage everything. Right. And so you'll see it, there's a culture associated with these different commands. And I always recommend DLA True Support and DLA Land and Maritime to be a very good start for for. That's DLA. good to know. Yep. Okay. Cool. So let me scroll down some more. Now the next step, uh, and the, and again, as you're looking at solicitations, Section A has a lot of boilerplate information. I'm not going to say don't worry about it, but the more you look at these, it'll start to become second nature, sort of like driving a five-speed car. You know, you don't really think right. you eat a burger and drink and talk. <laughs> it, it becomes one of those, right? Right, so right. Initially, I recommend you really kind of just understand these paragraphs and you'll start to train yourself like, okay, yeah, this is just standard stuff that they put in all of them. Right. Because well, every now and then- I know there's micro purchase on that too, so- yeah, yeah. Every now and then they'll throw another little clause in there that you never heard of. And it's good to right. just familiarize yourself because it does mean something. But you'll realize that, you know, at, as the more you do this, you just really want to get to what do they want to buy? You know, at right, the, right. Now, there are some aspects of Section A where they kind of talk about shelf life. Right. They'll talk about, you know, like cure dates and things like that. or. Right or a specific type of packaging instructions that may sometimes trickle into section A. So oh, it's yeah. just good to always familiarize yourself with section A, all right? Oh, now, yeah. nothing that I'm seeing as I'm scrolling over section A kind of jumps out to me. So I'm kind of looking as I'm scrolling. Uh, and then being that you don't have access to SAG Global any longer, uh, what you can do in the solicitations, of course, they provide past awards. So it kind of gives right. you an idea of the last time that this was bought. And then you start to kind of see cage codes and you'll see the same guys selling the selling over and over again. Yeah. And so you go, the only reason why these guys are selling over and over again, because people like me don't exist. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so, and uh, yeah, I wonder how long this is going to go at believe now and they start catching wind, like, wait a minute, this guy's giving us all the beans. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, so that's where you can get that information. Now in section B is where you kind of get to the rubber meets the pavement. And now uh, another area that you want to always be aware of is what the DLA considers their unit of issue. So the unit of issue could fluctuate. Like, let's say you have, you're working, if this is a medical, I'm not sure, uh, is this medical? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, shower side. Uh, you know, like those, when you go to the hospital and you put those socks on those kids. Okay, so cool. Yeah. So, you know, we work with uh, companies like McKesson, for example. And, oh, yeah, I got so, them on my list too. Yeah, so McKesson may have what their standard or commercial unit of issue is, which may not coincide with what the DLA considers a unit of issue. Right. So you want to make sure you're comparing the apples and apples when you get a quote from your vendor that is yeah. matching whatever was, was, was considered to be a package. The DLA considers a pack to be 72 pairs of socks. Right, right. All right. And this is another thing. You said these are socks, yeah. shower, sh shower shoes. Now, some people will say, okay, is this left foot, right foot? Is this a pair? It's a pair. Or is this, it's, a pair. it's a pair, you right. see? And so yeah. you kind of got to understand that too. And if you do run into issues, Randy, where you're like, okay, what are they asking for? You know, reach out yeah. to the contracting officer, oh, or yeah. the contract administrator and ask the question, you know, send them an email and say, hey, I'm looking to bid on this and I need to understand exactly what you guys are looking for. Now, is that the person that was on the top that had the email? Yep. Uh huh. Let's go back up here. Uh, and sometimes, and I will tell you, yeah, uh, yeah okay. Erica Garcia. Okay. I will, yeah. Okay. I will tell you that since the pandemic, the DLA has had some communication issues. <laughs> you know, as far as being able to get in contact with these folks. You right. know, so sometimes you may send an email and never even get a response back. Wow. Um, I, I don't know. Back in the day, pre pandemic right. they were very responsive now it's like who knows what's what's happening and so right, right. i don't have any connection to that but and the, even the phone number you, you know you can try to call the number you may get right. through you may get a voicemail that they never you know so these guys are under my understanding are overworked and underpaid so that's just back yeah. that input too. now you know how you say the, the, the unit of measure like well, a good example was i'm not sure with the, the med line uh, they did medical also and uh 
I'll look at them and you, I'll punch that in and they'll, they'll say CS, but they'll have the, the 72 total and stuff in there. So the, the case would be their package. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And so, you know, you'll have to create tools internally that allows you to know how to price it out such that whatever your vendor is giving you, you have to take that and translate that into what the DLA and make sure that you're capturing what the each cost is and right. multiplying it out so you cover the cost. Yeah, and the then Medline also give you the weight and everything too, the dimensions. I like build that group to do that too. Yes, and another thing to factor as well is what's called a minimum order quantity. So sometimes your vendors will say, hey, Brandy, I'll give you this price, but you got to buy a thousand of them. But you're like, I don't need a thousand. The DLA needs 998 of them. <laughs> you understand? And then yes. they'll say, well, in order to get that price, I can't break the case. You got to buy the full thousand. So right. now you're like, OK, do I buy these a thousand and who pays for those other two? Guess yeah. what? You have to figure out a, 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 you know, a calculation to know how to upcharge to cover those two. And that way you can ship the thousand to the DLA, right. but the DLA will sometimes say, hey, we only needed 998 and you shipped us a thousand. What are you gonna do with these other two? And then you say, oh, you can go ahead and keep them. Because you, <laughs> you, see, you already incorporated that. <laughs> yes, exactly, <laughs> you see. So you'll find that when you get involved deeper and deeper, some of these things I'm saying are going like, oh, yeah, the guru, he did say this. Yeah, yeah. it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So another thing looking at this, they give you salient characteristics, which are great. Right. Because I get this question a lot from vendors. And they say, hey, especially when it comes to Granger, everyone knows, as you see on my channel, Granger doesn't make anything. But sometimes you'll have Granger called out as a, approved source yeah. and then they'll give the Granger part number which links and when you go to granger.com you'll see it it's it's a 3m product right, right? It's manufactured by um you know just just it's manufactured by another company and right. and so then you go well how do i do i have to buy from granger and the question the answer to that is no you don't you have to be able to provide the dla with an exact match to what's called the salient characteristics Gotcha. All right. And so even when it comes to these shower shoes, if these guys are manufacturers, well, great. They're, you have to buy it from them because they are the OEM. They, they make the product. But if these are vendors that are just distributors like yourself, then yeah. what you want to do is find out who are they getting this stuff from. Right. And go there. Yeah. I know about Barker. You can't go to them. They want you to do like uh, the MetLine or... Mexican, those guys, they want to yeah. be. So be Bob part, Barker yeah. must be the OEM. A lot of times okay. the OEMs will shut the door in your face because they're like, hey, we've been doing this for a hundred years. Exactly. We already have our distribution networks lined up. And and it's and it's unfortunate that that happens because, you know, businesses come and go, you know? Yes. And so like, why do they keep it like that? But it's just the way it is. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Is, you know, that's something I've been struggling with for 20 years. Like, come on. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, that's that's the answer to that. So if you know Bob Barker is the manufacturer, so you yep. make sure you find whoever can give you that exact salient characteristics that match this part number. And you and the DLA will be just happy. Well, I got a company called Betty Mills and Betty Mills does business with those guys. So I know I can get you Betty Mills, that kind of stuff okay cool so that's that's that little part okay. um now, now head back up to go because the rpo thing ra whatever is up there uh, you know, like, right here see like the oh this right here yeah these guys yeah okay um yeah so again this is boilerplate type stuff um okay. where they're basically saying you know uh, this this clause is dla packaging requirements for procurement it's it's just something internal to the DLA as uh, maybe linked to the FAR. It's, this could be, or the DLAR. This this probably has something to do with the DLAR, but um, it is just boilerplate stuff that just letting you know that there will be packaging requirements. Now, keep this in mind. When you're bidding on dibs, all this boilerplate stuff, you don't see it in there anymore, right? <laughs> so, but it's referencing it in another way. Right. So I'm not to say that this doesn't matter, but the stuff that really matters is is already identified on dibs okay okay all right because so, i was scared when i the second one i was scared when i saw that 
that like by and R and then an I, I was like, I don't know what to do with this, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, this yeah. is just standard stuff, you know. It's okay. Like it's just telling you, you know, quality requirements, menu, just like a manufacturing kind of stuff. Basically, what they're talking about here, as long as you're providing an exact match to the manufactured goods, yeah, then, then you're good to go. Because keep in okay. mind that DLA is buying the same thing over and over and over again. Right, right. Every now and then, you may find a new, a brand new national stock number, but a lot of times, you know. Yes, we're done yeah, the same yeah. repetition, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're buying, so they know exactly what they want, you know, okay. over and over again. Right. All right. Any more questions in this section? No, no, no. Okay, and I don't want to make it seem like I'm just like squeaking past it, but no, it's, not, it's, that it's, you, you won't my to that because I just uh, like you said that the big boys know what that stuff means, but I need to get a handle on it too, and I now you kind of explain the way I can relate to it though. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely identify things like, hey, Randy, be careful here. <laughs> okay. like, F, like in block seven, the FOB destination, be careful with that, you know. Uh, right. Now, here we are in this section, and typically they'll tell you the inspection. You were asking about like DCMA, for example. Right. So right below what, you know, of what they're buying, like quantity and all that good stuff, they'll always right. tell you, well, the first thing is they'll say deliver in days. Now, this is the DLA. This is kind of like their hope, for example. <laughs> so they're saying, hey, I hope you can deliver this in 20 days because our software, our, our inventory management system is saying that we're going to deplete our inventory. I we need to have a restock by this time. Yeah. But because of the pandemic, your vendor may say it's going to take 60 days. Yeah. So yeah. just make sure that you are quoting exactly what it's going to take you. Don't care about what they're asking. Say what you can deliver because um, you don't want your, your your delivery performance score to be impacted negatively saying that you they can't trust that you you tell them 60 days and it takes you 90 days. You know, that can right. now, I can relate to this because being on the ship, you know, like we at sea, we got like a 90 day supply of stuff. So within like the 80th day, we got like a, a tender coming next to us and reloading and restocking us. So. I yeah. can relate to what they're talking about when you see those days, you know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. So, and then the next thing is the, uh, of course, we talked about the delivery FOB stands for right. freight on board. Right. Um, another thing is since you really get into this medical world, um, you know, uh, hazardous materials or like, let's say canisters, if you get into like medical gases and things like that, right. the DLA tries to limit liability because you may say, well, why don't they just pay for shipping for everything? And what I've found, the DLA says, well, if something happens on the road when that stuff is being shipped to us, yeah, they want to identify themselves with any liability from a hazardous perspective. Yeah. So they they say that you're responsible for whatever goes wrong with it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So that's yeah. where that a lot of that comes into that as well. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, inspection point destination, which is a good thing. That means it's being inspected at the depot. Now, if you find some that say origin. I don't say run from it, but I say origin means you got more eyes and ears on it. And so DCMA physically will send a rep to your, your office to inspect the materials before they approve right. okay. and sign a, a DD-250 form in order for it to be shipped. Okay. And you can sometimes run into issues with that because a lot of times DCMA has, they have no idea what this material is you know if you can just kind of think these guys are just you know uh and so they're they can make mistakes okay and they can prolong your delivery as well because now you got to get on their schedule they come right. out they may disapprove the inspection and they say well your label was crooked or whatever and now you got to get back on their schedule to get them to right. come back out and so the cost goes up and so what I recommend, if you do want to dive after the inspection point origin, always add an extra layer of profit to cover just that handling cost. I call it the cost of doing business. Okay. And it'll be different for different companies. For us, we try to have a rule of thumb of about extra 5%. So whatever, whatever the pass award was, whatever our, our base cost is, I add an extra 5% on top of that just to cover DCMA because I know there's always going to be something going wrong with DCMA. Right, right. Yeah. All right. So just, you know, this little nugget, rule of thumb. Okay. Uh, 
Let me scroll down some more. Any any more questions towards that? No, no. Uh, the other one was right here where you got the uh, the packaging data stuff, the meal. Yep. You guys. Okay. Cool. All right. And so right in here, this is the stuff that kind of gets you going like, okay, what is this now? Right. Um, what, uh, well, you be actually not, not really there. That's, this is standard. This is one, uh, 2073. You know, this is standard stuff. Um, this is when you wanted that and that's when you know, we got to do these things, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and a lot of times the solicitations don't do a very good job of telling you exactly how they want it to be packaged. You kind of find that out after the award is, is released to you. Uh -huh. Um, and it's, it's just, it's almost like one of these things that once you get the award, you kind of learn on that national stock number, and then you're going to keep bidding it over and over again. So you'll know the next time, because they, they don't really change the packaging requirements on national okay. stock numbers. It's going to be the same thing over and over and over again. So like you'll see in here, it's not really telling you, you know, like it should be in zip line. Student clients. I thought this would be an excellent opportunity to just take a pivot and to switch to showing you how the tool that SCI Global's Logic Common Opportunity Managers software tool is an excellent uh, tool to use to find out packaging data as it relates to national stock numbers. So in this example, in Randy's example, you see that the solicitation did not upfront provide you all of the packaging data associated with this national stock number. So the nice, the, the NSN in, in particular, in this particular um, example is what you'll see on screen there. So let me go ahead and click, do a quick search using the Logicom software. And we'll see quickly that it gets into different identified or, or approved, potential approved sources for this NSN. But what we specifically want to find out is what the packaging or the documented packaging information is on this NSN. So by clicking here on the NIIN, which brings up another pop-up, which popped up in a different screen. So let me slide it over. You'll see here that there's a lot of information in the left margin of this pop-up. And a lot of this information has to do with drawings. If the drawings are available, there's freight data, packaging data, and innocent forecast data, procurement history, so forth and so on. But for the sake of this pivot, we're gonna look at packaging data that's already preloaded in here. And so by clicking packaging data, you'll see, and let me open this screen up just a little bit bigger for you guys and move it over here. You'll see that there is packaging data source code. There's primary, secondary inventory control codes, intermediate, intermediate container ID information, unit packaging weight, and unit packaging size. Well, some of this stuff is preloaded in there, but what we really care about would be information like pertaining to uh, uh, method of preservation is would be important at this point. The cushioning and dunnage material code, the wrapping material code, the preservation material code, cleaning and drying procedure code, intermediate container code, you know, so forth and so on. All this information is on the screen. And for the sake of this particular solicitation or, or this particular national stock number, so for the sake of this particular national stock number, you'll see that we have a lot of ZZ designations, which typically translates back to a designation of commercial packaging. So for example, preservation method, when you click on ZZ, I'll go ahead and click the ZZ here. There's another pop-up that pops up on my other screen. Let me slide that over. And you'll see when we look up the ZZ code, by clicking that right in SCI Global, it provides you what typical, what the different codes mean. And so you can see here, the ZZ method of preservation shall be in accordance with the specific instructions or drawings provided. And typically for ZZ, that would be commercial packaging. And I'm scrolling down here to show you all the different packaging distinction codes that are in preloaded in here, right within the SCI Global tool that that just saves you a ton of time from you know needing to kind of look it up and try to locate this information on the on the dibs bit board system if it if it even exists there. This tool is really cool because it gives you some estimated uh, unit pack weight, which is 24 pounds. So in the event that you're trying to kind of price out if this was an FOB destination solicitation and you're trying to get an idea of what the, you know, the dimensions would be or the weight 
a ballpark weight that you would have to put into some kind of shipping calculator to kind of give you an idea of what that cost may be to get it from point A to point B. This is just a great tool that gives you some information versus you kind of being blind or read it, reaching out to the contract administrator or contract specialist and not getting a response quickly enough in order for you to, 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 to price this contract out and move on. With that said, this coupled with, well, using SEI Global coupled with our NMS part pricing tool version 2.0, uh, again, it's another great tool so that in the event that you were bidding on this contract, you're able to load in the, the NSN number. You can even put in the solicitation details, the manufacturing, cage code, unit measure, so forth and so on, and begin to populate all the fields that are located in this tool in order for you to price it out real time and to have a, a location to store all of this data into a, a cloud-based repository that you can then share with remote team members or even local team members in your office as it relates to just the management of DLA solicitation and bid data. And so I, for the sake of, of this particular pivot, I'm not going to go deeply into this because I do have training specifically to the use of this NMS part pricing tool. And I'll leave that in the description below. There'll be a link there if you're interested in learning more about this tool and how it can potentially 10x your company, your company's ability to, to manage all of the, the DLA solicitation data that, that you'll be getting yourself involved with as you continue on your DLA journey. So again, with, uh, without any further ado, I'm going to switch back over to, to complete today's training. You know, it, it's not a lot of information that they give you. Um, but just looking at the mill standard 2073 1E, right. that, that typically is more commercial packaging. You know, so you should be okay as, as it relates to bidding on this the, with the thought that it's nothing real crazy. Because then you also got to look at what the materials are too. Like if these were microchips or circuit boards, then you would probably need some, you know, vapor proof, static proof bags that, and you can buy them on Uline, but that cost kind of goes up, you know, yeah. and that yeah. kind of thing. But this one is probably going to be standard commercial packaging because these are, these are shoes or, or something, you know. Socks, yeah. Yeah, socks. <laughs> yeah. and um, yeah, socks. And uh, so nothing in here, you know, steps out, you know, jumps out to me to be something where you have to really be concerned. I think standard okay. standard packaging should be fine. And then they talk about the marking, um, you know, standard medical marking, which is mill standard 129, which again, is, is, is your basic, you know, your unit container ID label, and then okay. the documents that you get from VSM. Okay. Yeah. All right. So nothing, nothing scares me there. And, and then again, this is an FOB destination. So they'll tell you, you know, some people get confused from the parcel post address, yeah. the freight shipping address. Parcel post, you'll never ship anything to partial post. In 20 years, I've never sent anything to the partial post address. And I imagine that that's just there if you have like documents or something that you may be required to, you know, ship with your shipment, um, okay. you know, like, you know, certifications or something like that, possibly. But very, very rarely do you, I mean, a lot of times you just get it right, you, you email it right out to the contracting officer, right? But with this guy, um, the freight shipping address is what you care about. So you know that all your materials are going to Jacksonville, Florida. Right. So I could say this like US, UPS or FedEx. Yeah, yeah UPS, FedEx. Um, we used to ship with the United States Postal Service, but some depots are not so centric to the U USPS coming on their bases. I would say here... Yeah, I, I would I would keep it to FedEx and, and UPS. If I okay, would. yeah. Because I noticed that says uh, ship by traceable means, and that's definitely traceable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, the post office has, you know, you can put, you can you can do delivery confirmation on those and tracking on those too. But yeah, um, I, I avoid the post office. We used to use them because typically the post office is much cheaper. But right. We, we ship so much stuff that we have uh, really good rates now, you know, to. Right. And you get what you pay for with the post office, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> They'll exactly. say, we had it two days, and they say, hey, but we forgot about this part, you know, and you screwed because you're supposed to be on that date, so. Yeah, exactly. And so I talked earlier today about the Mark IV TCN yeah. number. Right. So whenever you see the Mark IV TCN, that is letting you know that these are probably, 
you know, end up going to this disposition center and then being redistributed from out. But you don't have right. to care about that. But you do have to care to make sure that and when you do the VSM documents, it will have this technical control number on those documents. Okay. Back in the day before VSM existed, we had to make sure that this number was on the labels and everything, because if you didn't have this, you were DOA. The DOA was not going <laughs> they were, they were to charge you to redo the labeling, you know. Now, is that the one where you put, you put one in a box and one other box knowing that too, how you label things or? Say it, say it again. Is that the one where you put like a, a sheet of paper with information inside of the box? Yes. Material then on the outside also? Yes. Uh-huh. So it'll be, uh, as a matter of fact, I have a, you probably seen the video since you say you love my content, but what I'm going to yeah. do is drop this in the chat for you because it's a great video that uh, the DLA, you know, I think I was the only one to announce it, which is great. Um, <laughs> so the video didn't really get a lot of views and I'm like, wow, people are missing out on some great information. But um, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to copy the link to the video and put it in the chat um, uh, for you. And I, I recommend you bookmarking this one. Let me see. Okay. Even controls. I'm going to drop this in the chat. So I know you said you're new to Zoom. Yeah. Uh, do you know how to bring the chat up there? Not really. I don't, I'll, I'll see down below the camera and the Zoom. Okay, icon. so where, where you clicked on the share screen, yeah. next to that icon should be a chat button. It's like chat, C-H-A-T. Uh, I see stop share. I see a check mark, and I said, like a little thing famous recording. Oh, wait a minute. I see apps, remote control, annotate, pause share, chat. Yeah, I see it. I got it right. number one. Yeah, click there. on that. All right, great. And so, what this is, we don't have to watch the video, but unless you haven't seen it. Uh, well, no, this isn't ah. the right one. <laughs> so, uh, click on that link in the chat. Click on the link in the chat. Yeah, when you click on, click on the chat box, and then you'll you should see a link inside of the chat box. Oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah, click on that that hyperlink in there inside of the chat. Perfect. All right, so we don't have to watch this video. I'm gonna go ahead and pause that. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I recommend watching it. It's a great video. <laughs> but uh, in here, in the details. And I, I think a lot of folks don't really spend time in the details. I put a lot of information in the details, but in here. The DLA just released some packaging videos, some training videos to help newcomers to know how to package stuff. And so they're they're segmented into these five different uh, segments, and okay. then they have then they combine all five into one video. And so what I'll do is click on this link for the the master video. I think it's like twelve yeah. minutes long. I recommend you look at this at the end of our call because okay. this will give you some information as to what like you answer the question about what goes in the box and the outside. Right. Of the box. It's a great video. And the DLA put this together. When did they release this video? On March the 9th. So it hasn't okay. been out that long. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you if you could go back, I can just save it because I have like, a, you know, folders I can put it in right now. Uh, yeah, I would say, uh, okay. Yeah. Da, da, da. Uh, let me see. Is it right? Yeah, it's right here. So and... let me go here. Let me go down here and I'll just go save. And All right, so you got it in there. I got it, yeah. So I'll put it. See, I got out the other. It's all it's already there, so I'm good. Cool. It's, it's safe. So cool. And then the other window that popped up, of course, once you. Oh, well, this isn't the one you want to save. It was another one uh, we're looking at. Uh, well, I oh, mean, yeah, okay. Of course, you want to save this one. This is software that can help you with your bidding as right. well. Well, um, I got that already. So yeah. Cool. Uh, where was the one that we were just looking at? I'm sorry, I lost it. Okay, click that link in the chat again. I don't even see the link no more in the chat. Let's see. Okay, here it is. Oh, you talking about oh this one here? Yeah, I can't see. Yeah, it must be in a different window because I can't see it now. Let me see if I can. There it is. There it is. Yeah. So I would recommend bookmarking this right here so you can come back and watch it later. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think yeah. it's a great, great video. I actually watched it yesterday. You know, I was like, I'll make sure I ain't forgetting something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So let's bring up that solicitation document again. Uh, where was it at? It's right here. Right, right there. Cool. All right. So, um, yeah. So that's what this MF stands for. Mark for. Okay. Stands for technical control number is what that means. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you know, the more of these contracts you'll do, you'll start seeing that kind of information as well. And then all these other little codes and stuff, they don't they don't mean this is all military stuff. It doesn't really mean anything for you as the I got you. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as far as and, and keep this in mind, you know, every solicitation, well, I shouldn't say every, uh, but you're gonna get some nuances right. with solicitations depending on the national stock number. Right. You know, depending or the the FSC, the 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 the, uh, the federal supply code. The, the FSC code is really going to dictate the types of terms and conditions because it's it's like the type of material, like, if, for example, if it's hazardous or if it's engine parts or if it's, right. you know, or if it's a, a del delicate electronics or computer products or, you know, it's always going to be something different. So right. I, I just say dive in and it just know that I'm not far away if you have questions right. that you yeah. know, you're like, wow, man, this is brand new. Because, uh, you know, for 20 years, I didn't have anyone to reach out to. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I had to figure out my own and yeah. skin my yeah. knee. They, call, they start head. calling you, change your name to Solo, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And sometimes, you know, that's sometimes the best the best teacher. But I, I think I could have done a lot better, you know, in my younger days. Because, uh, I mean, I've been doing DLA work before email was a thing. We were fat. <laughs> back and forth back then you know wow you faxing quotes and stuff there was none of that you know back then but yeah. so times are a lot a lot a lot better a lot easier to, to do business with the delay now yeah say once you get your first contract you know you might want to book a session with me on the vsm so i can kind of step oh, yeah that as well so how does that work? I just, it's an email to you or you say, I want to get, if you're available on this date or whatever? Or? Yeah. At, at the end of this call, I'll, I'll email you over. These are links where you can have access to my calendar, where you can okay. schedule one-on-ones. Uh, now okay. they're paid consultations, but trust me, I make it worth your while to, to answer any and all questions. So I say, you know, don't come with one question, come with a bunch of them. So right. you know, you can really maximize on your investment of extracting value from, you know, knowledge from my head. Okay, and I got to do a 30 minute one with you in the future too for the other project. So, yes, sir. I try to get that knocked out. Yeah. Well, you're not seven days a week, you're only five days a week, right? <laughs> no, I, no, my schedule is open on Saturdays. I think I, Saturdays, I think I'm open. I think we changed it now. I, I used to do Sundays, but <laughs> I've been getting a lot of work, you know, a lot of students and stuff reaching out. So I'm yeah. like, wait a minute, this is becoming a job now. I have to be careful. You know, because yeah. I wanted it to be kind of a little bit of a hobby in a way, but I got you. I got yeah, you. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then and another thing to stress too, be careful on 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 the QUP. Um because in what was that an acronym for again? It stands for quantity unit pack. Okay. And here, let me see if they disclose the QUP in this one here. Um, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But I can tell you that the QUP is going to be 001. I, I can just look at this and tell what's going to happen here. Um, yeah, they, they don't disclose the QUP in this one here, which is interesting. Here, let me do a quick search. Find okay. QUP. Yeah, it's not even, yeah, they don't even disclose it in here. See, that's that's another thing that's really scary about how they do these solicitations because they're they're not telling people up front how they how they want the labeling to be done. But uh -huh. just looking at this guy um and seeing that there are they're buying five packs and each uh -huh. pack has 72 pairs. Yeah. I I I I imagine that they're gonna want the QUP to be one. Which means you're gonna need five labels, all right? Oh, I got and you. Versus seventy-two times five. Oh, uh, do, do you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. So I could call up that number or email that person and inquire about that too, right? Yes. Or contact. 
Yes. Okay. And say, hey, you know, I just want to just make sure that you're only looking for, you know, five unit unit ID labels. Or are you looking for 375 unit? ID? <laughs> <laughs> I got you. you yeah, you I'm glad you said that, man, because I would have been a little screwed on that one. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, and, and 375 is, is doable because that's basically 375 little labels that you put on each right. you know, pair, of, pair of socks. But what if this was what if this was? 500 here i know yeah <laughs> yeah because like right now we have a contract that we're working on where we're we're selling some um, gaskets uh right. i think it's the dla uh dla aviation and it's 2000 gaskets and the qp oh, is yeah. one so my team right now is literally labeling <laughs> little, and the gaskets are about as big as a quarter <laughs> you know and so one of the or one of our team members, she actually got the contract, and so she's new to the team. And right. said, how much profit did we get out of this? Oh man, you didn't price it right because you know that's that's effort. You know, yeah, that's, exactly. That's a couple of hours to to label that stuff. You know, so yeah. you know, someone has to pay for that. You know, exactly. So it's just little little nuances like that. As you get involved, you're gonna say, oh man. So you're gonna win some, you're gonna lose some as you kind of find your sweet spot. In, in oh yeah, this. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Well, you you don't make my day here on TV. <laughs> I was I like I said at that night I'll be like at two o'clock in the morning, I'll be listening, looking at the videos and stuff. My wife be like, that's like an hour and a half. I ain't got nothing to do. I'm in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I crave knowledge, right? So yeah. And, you yeah. know, I even if I fall asleep, you know, you're so conscious, I always listen to everything anyway. So it'll come back to me and it makes sense when I look at it again. So yeah. Hey man, I'm gonna keep the content coming. Their, your feedback is is golden to me. You know, it just makes because sometimes I'm like, am I really? Is this worth my effort? Because I I am been burning the midnight oil, I, and I'm excited. I'm you know I'm an engineer. I'm a creative person, so I kind of right. I, I kind of get a high out of it as well. Right. Uh, you know, mess around with the knowledge and seeing how YouTube works and stuff and all this. So yeah, okay. well, I, I'll keep it I, going. I say you, you were God sent there because uh, I just got tired listening to those other people and then. You know, they, they talk a good game, but to me it was boring and they weren't down to earth because it was all about making that money. And then, you know, brag and say, hey, uh, you know, uh, I got Kiwi this, this bit here and Kiwi Kellerman. Okay, now we got to do business. Let's say goodbye to the people. And they're not really realistic, you know. Yeah. They're not down to earth. And you yeah. are, you know. So. Yeah, I, I figure if you, you know, you give it away and it'll come back to you, you know. Exactly. And yeah, and being that you're a service able vet, you know, as you get more involved, I I like the opportunity to include you with. Uh, there's something that I'm thinking about doing, as it relates to some of my vendors that we have really good relationships with. Right. That I see some of those set asides where I know I can't touch them because I don't have uh, like a team of companies that I can reach out and say, hey, look, hey, I can get this price for this if you want to bid it. If you don't have hey. a connection, you can go ahead and bid it. If you win it. Hey, I, you know, we'll we'll work with you. I'm um, your guy. Let me let me show you a link to my website and show you that I was so proud when I got that certification. I'll put it on my site here. So let me type my website in here and let's take a look at it. Okay. This is my website and at the bottom. See, I'm that certified guy. Boom. Nice. <laughs> got, it, got it in there. Yep. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah. Nice, then nice, people, nice. If people look at my capability statement too, you know, see it. Boom. There too. <laughs> nice. Okay. So all your information is in there. Fantastic. And and Randy, I'll add your email address to our service table vet. Uh, you know, sourcing partners. Yeah. Now we're we're not actively pursuing these yet. I'm still trying to wrap my mind around how we're going to proceed and making sure that, you know, it's all you know seamless or seamless process. But yeah. you'll start to get from time to time, you may get some, hey, hey, Randy, hey, here's a price on this opportunity. Go ahead and, you know, you know, put your markup okay. on it and see yeah. where it takes you, you know. Hey, I'm your guy. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, well, we got, well, how much more time we got left? We got three more three, minutes. Right. Yeah, <laughs> funny, since I'm on here, I, I remember you talking to some guy and he kept getting this guy. I go to, this is in California. It's right down the road from me. For Irwin, you kept saying Irving or something like that, but it's for Irwin. <laughs> oh, think of, okay. After they do a lot of training, yeah, they got a lot of stuff uh, from D to DLA over there too, man. Ah, okay. And since I'm in Vegas, I go to Nellis. Now, like I said, you could be a vendor, so I would go make stuff uh, from sublimation to heat heat transfer vinyl to 
uh, the director film. And like I said, I got my machine here where I do the embroidery. I do a bunch of jackets for the for the Navy guys because in the Navy, you know, you're going to for cruise, you want to show the country you've been to. So I made a bunch of jackets like that. Oh, so okay. yeah, yeah. So you know, talent on loan from God, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see textiles, bag, and canvas mills. Okay, so you're into. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure the DLA. And, and I work with the USDA too. So that was my background when I got out. I worked at the embassy for a couple of years. So yeah. Hmm. yeah. And then I do stuff for the colleges, just uh, affinity. That's for the universities, for the uh, fraternities, sororities. So mm -hmm. I'll make socks and I'll make jeans and uh, hoodies for those guys too. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All so right. I, I put that on Etsy though. So I get a lot of people hitting me up on that too. But I want to do the you know, I want to do the easy money though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I wouldn't say DLA. My experience has been, I, I I say it's a it's a great it's a great customer to have the DLA because it's a customer that that's always there. They're recession proof. All right. Uh, but you know, there is some finagling and some finesse that you'll need to have, especially like when you get into the labeling and that kind of stuff, and then right. working with the vendors and getting your credit limits, you know, like to kind of get yourself established. But once you get in there and you get a national stocking number that you kind of own, yeah. that's where it becomes easy because you can inventory that product and you know the DLA is going to keep buying it. Every every month you're going to get, uh, you know, a, a, a order that comes in. And then if you're able to find what's called IDIQ contract awards, which stands for indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity. ID IDIC? IDIQ. IDIQ. Okay. Yeah, they're indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity. And you'll see them as solicitations on dibs. It'll actually say IDIQ, which okay. means that the DLA wants your price to be locked in for a year. And what they'll do is award you a master contract that says we will buy up to $250,000 of this national stock number from your company over the That's course. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, and when you get those types of contracts, those are pretty cool because you know that you know, there's no guarantee of what they're going to buy, but it's almost like if you look at past award information, you can say, well, last year they bought. So then you can work with your vendors. I got you. Deeper discounts to buy this stuff up front, you see. Yeah. But I'll say this before I go. You know, make, what makes you stand out is that uh, you, get person, you get a person excited because you show <laughs> your enthusiasm. And I can feel that, Joe. So that's what it is. Cool. All right. Well, thank you. I will keep it coming. You know, as an entrepreneur, I have to, I have to find ways to keep myself going. <laughs> <And> <laughs> well, trust me, you, you definitely motivate people. You definitely motivated me. So. All right. Fantastic. Well, yeah, hey, so you, Randy, it was your nickname to me is your nickname to me is Ching Ching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ching, I hear you, man. But, but thank you for your time and your patience with me. You know, and I'm going to definitely contact you and get another 30 minute one going for the other portion. So, oh, okay. All right. I'll look forward to seeing you again. All right, man. I'll talk to you later. All right. Talk to you later. All right. All right. Bye. You too. Bye. Thanks for watching. Also, if you find my related content inspiring, Please show your support by hitting the like, share, and subscribe button along with the notification bell so that you can be alerted when I drop new relevant content to empower you for success with the DLA. Also by doing so, you'll help me reach a larger audience of people who may be also interested in learning more about government contracting and doing business specifically with the world's largest customer, the Defense Logistics Agency. Please don't forget to check out my flagship masterclass, Eight Steps to Successful Federal Supply Contract Bid Submissions to the DLA. This masterclass provides a balanced approach to virtual education and is designed for both beginners and seasoned companies alike, with proven techniques on the best way to position your organization to being successful with winning federal supply contracts with the DLA. The masterclass contains three and a half hours worth of content, along with proprietary and recommended software tools designed to empower you for success with the DLA. Check out the links provided in the description below to learn more today. Thanks again for watching and for tuning in to this exciting announcement. I'm Parker Winslow, signing out.